Hey, how are you? Happy Friday. How are you, my friend? Are you doing well? Are you very, very glad that it is the weekend, baby? It is Friday and you got some relaxation coming. At least I hope that's what you've got going on in your world. Um, I am just going to share a few moments with you and then I will sprinkle some love and positivity for your Easter weekend. No matter what you believe, religiously or not, um, this is a weekend where I am inspired to explore this idea of unconditional, total self-acceptance. For my peeps out there in the Christian faith, you know, people say that Jesus died for our sins so that we could be you know, free from the guilt and the shame for doing things wrong. And no matter what, I truly believe that we are all meant to forgive ourselves for our mistakes. You know, um, I love the way that Maya Angelou said it, when you know better, you do better. But in my work as a medical doctor, uh, as an empowerment coach, and now an activator to lightworkers, I've met people who still hold on to shame and guilt, and it's weighing them down. It's preventing them from actually sharing their gifts and from showing up 100% authentically as themselves. Do you know anybody like that? Do you know anyone who is carrying the weight or the burden of past mistakes? Um, failures in business or love or anything and it's preventing them from stepping up. The reason this is particularly on my heart right now is because I, um, I had some interesting interactions with um, an individual, we'll just leave it at that, <laughs> and we were talking about mutual projects and we both work in the realm of media. And as I was looking at um, my own uh, reactions, we'll just put it that way, my own reactions and my own resistance uh, around one of my upcoming projects, um, this person just like took me to task and like pressed and was like, wait a minute, Andrea, what are you working on and where are you going with this? Okay. I don't want to be too vague, but um, one of the things that I'm working on is, and it's been a long time coming, <coughs> is a documentary film, something that was impressed upon my heart many years ago to do, to really first and foremost kind of share the discoveries that I've made since my own spiritual awakening um, when I hit rock bottom from depression back in 2005, had an out-of-body spiritual awakening and, and then it drove me to really start looking at what happened to me spiritually, how, um, how I even got into that place of really not loving and accepting myself, and how it could be erased so easily or quickly through this spiritual epiphany. And what came up for me personally is I started looking at different cultures, different um, belief systems, uh, I was doing a lot of meditation and qigong and a lot of personal development workshops and it really struck me that I started to meet other people who had similar stories, who for whatever reason, whatever trauma or drama in their past, they felt like there was something covering them on a deep level that made them not lovable or not um, perfectly acceptable, not only to others, they felt that they were not acceptable to others, but they also felt they weren't acceptable to themselves, and they carried that. And I know what that felt like because I grew up with some very perfectionistic tendencies so that no matter how things looked on the outside world, no matter how hard I tried to be perfect, there was still something inside that made me feel like I was not quite good enough. And over time, after many, many years of carrying that feeling of not being good enough or not being enough, whatever, smart enough, fast enough to, to respond, um, thorough enough in something, whatever the enough was. 
When I got to that realization back in 2005, just around the corner here in Cannes, and I realized that all of us at our core, we are enough. And uh, as my dear friend Helena Philipson said in her TED Talk recently, it's like just being born on the planet, you already earned your right to be loved. You are enough. And anyway, so back to my situation. So it occurred to me uh, as I had my own spiritual awakening and epiphany that I started to look at other cultures, other people, from, from traditional Western cultures to shamanic cultures to indigenous cultures, um, various wisdom traditions and faith-based traditions. And I realized that we each go through this very logical and sometimes a very spontaneous process of returning to true self-awareness or self-knowledge, like the awareness that you are not your body, that no matter how perfect you try to be, there is something that's not tangible. It's not in your body. It's not your mind. It's not what you have on your resume. It's not all of your qualifications, your bank account, your weight, your diagnoses. Like all of those external labels are not truly pointing to you. And coming to that realization, yes, for some of us, it happens in spiritual things, whether we're in prayer. Um, you know, why is it that so many people, when they visit a holy place, a temple, a mosque, um, a meditation retreat, a church, we get touched by this sense of awe, this sense of purity, this sense of wonder. Or when we look at a newborn baby, we sort of reconnect to this sense of hope and purity in who we are fundamentally. And it struck me a few years ago, like I want to bring to life a story, or several stories, my own, but the stories of other people who have gotten out of hardship into this place of total self-acceptance through a variety of means so that other people can realize that we're all the same. No matter our culture, we all have this internal desire to be seen, to be received for our true, authentic self. We want to express ourselves in different ways and not feel judged. And as I was describing this film project, this documentary, um, my friend kind of pressed me and said, Andrea, the purity of this vision it's clear that it came from somewhere else. Certainly it came from my experience, but it, I'm also getting all my little spiritual downloads in meditation and in dreams, sometimes just walking. And he really um, challenged me to own it. And for many of you uh, who know, I see beautiful Margareta and Carol Fisher, Fisher Taylor um, and Jacqueline. I have all these people surrounding me in all these different countries and you all know my heart of compassion is about giving and supporting others and helping you to shine your light and bring your messages to the world so that more people can heal more people can awaken to the, who they really are but i was challenged last year and i was reminded of it today um, and uh, yes rehenna lovely to see you as well um, I, I was reminded that the visions that we receive, the blessings that you get, the talents that God bestowed upon you are meant to be shared in this lifetime, not buried, right? Isn't there a biblical story about that, about receiving some talents? If you look at the word derivation, it wasn't the same thing as talents like, you know, the talents that we have to play piano or for graphic design or healing but these talents that um, were given, and somebody said, oh, these are so prized, I'm just gonna go bury them and not use them. We were meant to use the talents and the gifts that we have to express ourselves, to grow, to be in connection, and to be in collaboration with other people. We're not meant to sit on those. And it's funny because I have said to other people like, that's kind of selfish. You got some revelation, you know how to do something really well, and you're just going to sit on it? How selfish of you. Like, share. Let more people know about it. And it's not about bragging. There comes a moment when you decide, I want my life to be about something. I want 
my life expression to be a gift, to be a blessing, to be a testament to all that is divine. And when we are willing to do that, then we move out of ego and we move into this soul space where we decide that I'm going to walk this path, may not be perfect, I may still make mistakes, unlearning all of my past programming, but I want my life to be a contribution to other people, right? Have any of you had that experience where there's something that hits you that you get deeply touched and you realize, I want my life to matter, not in an egoic sense, but in the sense that, wow, being human, we have consciousness. We have the ability to make choices. We have the ability to affect change. We have the ability to transform our experience of life on the planet for each other, for ourselves, for our families. And when we, when we make that recognition, that move from ego to soul or that heart, then it also presents us with a new challenge. How do we walk that fine line between sharing our gifts enthusiastically and not feeling like it's an ego trip and sharing enthusiastically so that other people um, will be benefited, so that other people will be inspired. And what came up for me was, wow, if I don't honor this divine download, this vision that was given to me, would I regret it? No, I know regret is not necessarily a popular topic, but I think about it a lot. Part of my spiritual tradition involves meditating on the last breath. So if you could imagine yourself on your deathbed with hopefully beautiful loved ones around you and you're about to peacefully depart this life, could you say you were going to die with no regrets? And so I meditate on that a lot, meditating on not being so attached to this body or necessarily the accomplishments, but what, what has my soul experienced in this life? Did I live it to the fullest or was I in my mind or obsessing over things? Or... And so when I think about not living with um, any regrets, I'm not dying with any regrets, I think about of all the ideas and the gifts and the talents that I feel like I have, all of these things bubbling in me, if I didn't share, if I were to go out right now sitting on these, how would that sit with my heart and my soul? And that's when I had this, this sort of reconnection to um, what I will call integrity. And integrity for me is about wholeness. It's about bringing all parts of us together. And in that integrity, it means that I'm honoring through my words you know, I'm making sure that my speech is aligned with my heart and my soul, my values, in other words. The things that I say I believe in, am I actually speaking the words that are in alignment? And am I living in alignment with those beliefs, those spiritual values or ideals? And integrity for me is about lining up how I behave with my words and my intentions from the soul or the heart. So as we were having this conversation about this documentary that I'm um, embarking on, it came back to me that um, there are so many people around me who have been supporting me and who have pledged their support. And I just, I'm so filled with awe and honor to, to bless these souls who've um, just stepped up to say, I am with you and I want to support you, Andrea. And I'm like, just touched. And... I guess it's, it, I can accept it because after doing that for so many <laughs> other people, it's like, oh, can I accept? And this is where I'm getting to. I'm finally getting to the point about this total self-acceptance. Just as much as I've seen other people who were like, oh, I'm not worthy. Why, I'm not good enough. I, I, I've recognized that in myself. And even though I thought I had purged that years ago, it came up again. And it was like, oh, ooh something to work on. Because in my spiritual tradition, we don't back away from painful feelings. Um, we know that emotions are just energy in motion. And so we don't try to run away from it. We don't try to stuff it or hide it or deny it. When something comes up, it's like, oh, hello there. We acknowledge it 
And the way I practice, it's like, okay, what is this here to teach me or show me or tell me? Because our feelings are messengers. They're here to communicate with us. And even as a doctor, the feelings you have in your body, they're just messengers. They're trying to tell you, oh, you're going a little off on your diet or you're, you know, you're drinking too much or you're not sleeping enough or whatever. Our bodies can communicate what we need to do to fully live healthfully in this body. And our emotions can speak to us to deliver messages about where we are out of alignment or out of integrity. So when this feeling came up in me, it was like, can I accept this support? Can I accept all of this um, attention that's telling me, yes, go forth with your vision, not everybody else's vision, your vision. And it, it really struck me. It was like, ah, yes, I say yes. I say yes. So I want to just say a little few hellos to some other people who joined. Douglas Brinker, my dear friend, Alison Condler. So good to see you, my friend. Um, and Sarah Kate, yes, you remember your first big jolt of awakening but small reminders for you too. It's totally a journey, not just a destination. And yes, our bodies are so wise if we listen, says the dear Margareta Tosi, who is the uh, spiritual doula and hypnobirthing coach in Italia. So here's where I want to end this with you is this. It's about total self-acceptance. Whether you think that the Christ was born and died for your sins, so you're wiped clean and you're meant to step up and live as your full self. You've, you've been forgiven. Or you just practice your own spiritual practice of recognizing that we're all children. We all make mistakes. And there is no use carrying the burden of shame. Going through some sort of self-forgiveness practice and self-compassion uh, practice can bring you back to that true self-acceptance. And if you did truly accept yourself, could you then step up and say, I'm ready to say yes to that next level in my life where whatever that mission is that I feel is going to be a part of my soul's evolution, I'm willing to say yes. I don't know. Is there anyone out there that's willing to do that? Are you? Are you? Are you? Because that's the kind of game I'm up to. It's what I've been up to for the last several years in my life personally, and now it's translated into my business life. And so I was just really struck with this humbling moment of recognizing that, yeah, walking my talk and walking in this total self-acceptance, I've come so far from being so afraid to share my truth to now being here with you on a weekly basis, talking about the weirdest, most esoteric stuff, my personal vulnerabilities. And yes, two weeks ago, I sang live on the TEDx stage in Peterborough. So it's like, wow, I have been walking this and now I'm at a new, I won't call it a plateau, but I'm at a new opening with this documentary film and stepping up my game in business with my my private uh, mentoring circle and it's like how can we accept who we are and accept that the gifts we were given are not ours to keep the gifts that you were given the talents that you were given the ideas and inspirations that come downloaded or bubbling up wherever they come from for you were not meant to be slept on, put away, sitting in some desk, drawing dust. Shout out to Gega. She had this little baby in, a, in drawers for eight years. And it's fine. I mean, there's no judgment there. I've had books sitting in me for years that eventually they got out. But there comes a moment, again, when you're going from ego to soul, when you recognize it's not egotistical to say I have these talents and these gifts. If I know that I can use them in communion with my soul or my higher self or God, the divine, whatever you want to call that higher state of consciousness that says in this lifetime, I want to make it the most impactful, meaningful life. And yes, I've made mistakes. I'm going to continue to make mistakes, but I can forgive myself because that's what humans do. We get things wrong, even when we have the best of intentions. And that at the core of us, 
at the soul level, we're, we are worthy of forgiveness on an ongoing basis. Now that's not license to go around and mess up and keep messing up. But when you decide to hold yourself accountable and accept that the gifts that you were given were meant to be shared. Now, I had a beautiful conversation this week with a, a lovely soul named Rob Goddard in the UK, one of our global luminaries at Make Your Mark Global. And he has committed to create a charitable foundation, giving away at least a million pounds a year. Now, can you imagine founding a new charitable organization <clears throat> with the sole intention of making sure, making sure you give away a million bucks? And it's like, it, it just, it, the conversation with him continually like renews my faith because I had previously been watching these reports about people like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, you know, people who have billions who start later in life to give away billions keeping at least one or two billion for themselves. <clears throat> and, I've, and I've often wondered, sorry guys. I've often wondered, do we have to wait for all the billionaires to like have some spiritual awakening or epiphany or get to the point where they're 70 years old when they finally realize, okay, I can give away some of my millions and billions to help others. Like, do we have to wait that long for the redistribution of wealth? And so having this conversation with Rob and knowing his gifts um, and that he's using his gifts to help others and investing in companies and advising and this charity and all this stuff, I was like, ah, oh, yes, we can use our gifts while we are yet young. We can use our gifts to make an impact in the world right now if we can unconditionally accept that I may not be perfect, but I have something to give and something to share. But you can't give what you don't own. If you don't accept that you are a blessing on this planet, if you don't accept that you are the gift, then it's going to be very difficult to share your presence without saying, oh, oh it's not that bad, it's not that good, nah, 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 nah. Do you know that? Do you know that dance, that nah, nah, nah? <laughs> Um, I know you do. So my friends, I just wanted to share that. Please know that this beautiful weekend and every weekend and every day and every moment, you are worthy of forgiveness. Forgive yourself. Forgive those who have done you wrong. You know, karma is, is always working, whether in this lifetime or another. Stuff is going to get regulated and worked out. <clears throat> But we can take an active and proactive stance to say, let me be the change I want to see in the world. Let me go ahead and make this wrong right by forgiving someone else, releasing them from your vengeance and anger and re releasing yourself sometimes as well so that you can say, okay, the past is the past. This day is the day that I have right now. And if I'm going to create a, a positive future, then that means I have to take responsibility. I have to be accountable to my future. And if I am going to have a positive future, if I want positive conditions and causes for my life to be fruitful, then I take accountability for the karmic actions I put into place right now. And so that means practicing generosity and tolerance and love and peace and purity and kindness and wisdom and joy. That's what we need to be focused on and letting go of the stuff that doesn't serve us and it doesn't serve others. It's only that poison. And accepting, just accepting that it doesn't make you egotistical or a braggart to accept that you have a gift or some of you many gifts. You've got a whole lot of good things working for you. So work them. Use them in service to others. Start with yourself and then your family and loved ones and then blast it out so that we can be the change we want to see in the world. Okay, my friends? I am, I don't know, I am just filled with awe and inspiration. I have personally reconnected to that sense of ownership of my voice, for one. Um, this singing thing, I don't know where it's going to take me. 
Um, I've always loved singing and performing, and I'm so excited that I'm writing new music, I'm working with new musicians and producers, and it's something that now I don't have that younger version of me wondering, like, am I going to sell a record and, you know, get on MTV? You know, I'm dating myself. But now it's like, no, my voice and my talents I give in service. I make an offering to the world, and I invite that divine energy to move through me and use my, my talents um, for the benefit of all beings to ease pain and suffering, to enlighten, to inspire, to entertain, to um, inform. That's what I'm here to do. So anyway, my friends, I, um, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Jacqueline, for not electrocuting yourself <laughs> and sharing. Ebony Marie, love, it's been a while since I've seen you. I'm so glad that you are tuned in and hopefully you're getting something good. Om Shanti Naman out in India, and Lena, wonderful to see you, my friend. I will see you next week. Um, yeah, so there you have it, my friends. Short and sweet this time. I wish you a beautiful weekend, and please know, um, oh, and Margareta says I can come and sing in her birth center. Ooh, I can sing little lullabies for the mamas as they're getting ready to deliver. Ooh, I love that idea. Anyway, my friends, I wish you a beautiful, beautiful, long weekend. For those of you who, are, uh, who have the extra day off on Monday, enjoy. Enjoy this time with your family. Hopefully you've got sunshine like we do. But no matter what, let's just please walk with this knowing in your heart that you matter. You are a precious gift to the world. The talents and the gifts, even though you may think they're basic you might think that, oh, this stuff comes naturally. Is it really that special? Just know that it is. And to the other person who doesn't have that talent, when you give it and share it or use it in whatever way, whether you're working in a store or you're a student and you're helping someone else with their lessons, you're tutoring or helping, no matter what you're doing, if you're using it with the intention to, to serve and to bring light and love, that's the gift. And of course, you're generating some positive karma that will be a blessing to you in the future. So I, um, that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you today. I wish you a wonderful weekend, and I will see some of you in Spain next week. I'll be sure to broadcast at some point. And until then, remember, you are a gift to the world. So share your presence with passion. Much love. Bye.